Hello everyone, welcome back to the action. Up next, the last 32 match between Jimmy Croxton and Tom Cousins. Mark Shepherd and Luke Gilbert with you for this one. As Tom Cousins gets off to the worst possible start, smashing the white straight into the centre pocket. Yeah, you saw a bit of Tom's power as normal. Cue ball in, in the air for a little bit of time, but lands straight on a red and gets kicked into the centre. I feel a little bit hard done by to be fair. He's, he's obviously not played to jump the cue ball, but a bit unfortunate to get kicked in off and le leaves Jimmy with a nice chance. That was Jimmy's first shot of the tournament. He's had a charmed run this weekend. By through the first round because he was seeded and then his opponent unable to make it in the last 64, so a second by. Some people get all the luck, don't they? Jimmy was getting a bit of stick from this earlier on, but he'll be happy to take it. Absolutely, you've got to take it when the opportunity comes to you. And straight into the money, a few ranking points, push him closer. Uh, maybe he's just inside the top 16 already, I'm not 100% sure, but he'll be pushing him closer either way. Yeah, currently sitting at 23rd in the provisional rankings, so well within the 32 seeded spots. But I think that's one ahead of me, so that's not very good, is it? <laughs> Well, it's okay. I guess if it's the people ahead of you that are doing well, as long as people don't catch you up. Uh, perfect, perfect opportunity to take the lead. Just what you want. First time you're hitting the ball in a tournament. Just a nice open split. And he just got into that one a bit, bit more. He wanted to kind of be on the bottom rail, so he's now going to play for the eight ball into the top middle as we look now, left left hand side middle, rather than into the bottom right. Shouldn't be a problem, but always annoys a player slightly when you're just not quite where you want it to be. So he just falls in off the near jaw, but that will do for him. It certainly does in Tom's game. Um, so he'll be looking for a nice opportunity off his own break here. Yeah, he's taken to adopting the stance where he kind of leans into the shot a bit more, gets his whole body through it. It's dry, but it's certainly a lot more work to do than what there was on Tom's break. And I suppose that, that's always a a bit a bit of a bonus if, if you don't have the best of breaks. Sometimes when you do go dry, you're not leaving easy opportunities for your opponent. And this certainly isn't one here, I think. Yellows will be the favoured choice, but still, what one main problem I suppose, which is the ball on the right hand side of the table, tied up with the red, he's attacked it straight away and that's a great shot. That's a phenomenal shot from where he was, the judgement and getting enough pace onto it. I think it, 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 every ball every ball may have a pocket now, it's, it's the, the ball he's closest to is sti still the problem because I'm not sure he can play it now. From this angle, it looks like he can, but from that overhead, it looks awfully tight. But Cubal seems really close. It looks like he's going to play it. Yeah, he really wants to play it because he doesn't want to come back for it, but it's not completely straight. And as you say, it's very close. Maybe play it with a touch of side as well. He's, he's forced into playing it quickly now. The buzzer's coming down. He's missed the part. But that, that was the main thing, was making sure he was on the yellows. Just no, no opportunity for Jimmy to clear up here. He's going to have to look for a safety option. And, you know, there, there, aren't, there aren't great options, really. I think he may have to play a loss of turn down into the bottom right-hand corner and screw the cue ball up the top of the table, try and hide it between the two reds. Yeah, this is not the same position that he's left in the first frame. There's a lot of work to be done with the reds here. And he's playing exactly like you said, although he hasn't quite got the white you were suggesting. And I think, I think on Tom's previous shot, he just nudged that the yellow that's where the two are together. The outer one went previously, but it doesn't anymore. So I don't know whether he's maybe got the angle to top into them now. Run on a little bit of luck to stay on a ball. And he has tried to, and he's played that with a lot of power. He's been very un oh, it does go. He's just flicked out. It's okay here. Yeah, he, he can pop this ball. 
bump the cue ball into the red. And he, he, he can, he'll land next shot on the ball along the rail. He's played two great disturbing shots already so far in this frame. To break out difficult balls. He's played that well as well. He's got the red out of the way, so everything opened up. Yeah, he can just play for the ball along the rail now. Doesn't want to land straight. Thankfully, the cue ball's natural line will just bump him off the rail. Don't think he's going to quite flick the yellow, so it's not too bad. Yeah, just comes past it. Could play the one in the middle now if he wanted, but I'd be very surprised if he did. He'll just be playing the one down the rail. Bring the cue ball across to the right hand side of the table where he can drop the yellow in for the for the eight ball into the right centre. Yeah, if it if it is tighter than than what it perhaps looks on the camera, he may take the ball into the middle. He just accept a bit of a tougher positional shot onto the eight. Don't expect it to be a problem. This way around, he does have to play a shot, whereas the other way, he can just drop it in naturally. Yeah, and no, I think it was just the camera angle, maybe not showing us how easy it was to get on that ball in the middle. He was so good on it then, it might not have been too easy, but under hit this by a long way. Yeah, he's now left a missable black. It's one you would still expect him to get, but it's a, it's a slightly awkward angle. Oh, well, is that a little bit tougher? Because you put yourself there as well. But like I said, you do expect him to make it. It's there. You'd have to say it's Tom and Stevie this year, um, whereas the previous year is just Mick on his own and Shane on his own. But it's quite a surprise to not just see completely different winners all the time. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And the way Tom started, second time we were in Blackpool this season, winning both events back to back and beating Stevie in both finals. It was extraordinary to have the same final twice. It was also a weekend where Connor Tracy won both of the Challenger events, which was arguably even more of an achievement given that it was a 288 man field. Yeah, it's it sort of become like a pattern, didn't it? People kept people kept winning two events in the same weekend. I think uh, that sort of started. Jack Whelan started that back on the World Rules Pool Tour. Um, the final year that that ran may have even been the final event of the year I can't really remember but um, they, they, they were big fields and he came through both and uh, obviously one of them tournaments is only a first of four as well so that's maybe even more impressive you know we're, start, we're starting to have that discussion of whose double was more impressive was it Tom's was it I believe Shane done it one weekend um, obviously Connor Jack Whelan done it you know just just kept happening. Yeah, that Whelan one was a huge performance. It was, yeah, I think you might be right. It may have been the final ever event. It was the event held in London. Fantastic venue. Massive field that weekend. Yeah, I actually, um, Matt Povey, who plays um, localish to me, he uh, runs a lot of tournaments at local, sort of the only ones that we've been allowed to enter this year other than the ultimate series he played in first round of both events so that was nice for him he had a quick easy weekend but yeah it was impressive it was very impressive from Jack and kind of started a trend and made everyone feel like they needed to do a double as well not quite sure I'll put my double at the Euros into that bracket being as one was an under 23 tournament and there was only about 32 entrants but I'll, I'll still claim it it's fine you've done a couple of gifts you do a treble as well yeah the world championships this year yeah the team event the the singles and the doubles yeah i've, I've had a i've had a good year on the international scene um especially at the under under 23 level managed to pick up a men's title as well which obviously the the biggest title in my career so far so Hopefully I can build on that next year or maybe this weekend if I can stop conceding frames early like I did in my match yesterday. It'd be nice. But at this level you just you, you just gotta come in with no expectation, it's so tough. As we see Jimmy trying a high tariff shot there, trying to screw off the bottom cushion, come off and land into that onto that red into the bottom right I believe. Flicking the yellow, just got in the way. 
Yeah, he does love a highlight reel shot. We're having some fun at the Players' Championship. He kept playing very high tariff shots. We were collecting them all up for the video. I don't know if this ball sneaks into the. Yeah, it's here. It's in. Oh, it's going to. Is that just pulled out a touch? Yeah, when he hit it, it looked good. I think maybe yeah. just the lack of pace at the end that just drifted offline. But these are the frames that, unfortunately, you just do not win. Tom's going to play the lot of turn. He'll play the cue ball with right hand side to get him welded in behind that yellow that's on the top cushion. Leave no nice easy option of the one the one rail and to leave Jimmy sight well to hit the eight ball and get it towards that top pocket. Really surprised at that. I thought I thought he'd take I thought he'd play the shot. It's almost a free go to get the cue ball behind that yellow at the top and. You don't leave this bottom cushion. Yeah, guaranteed the sneaker playing it like that, but it was never going to be a difficult one. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like he was guaranteed the snooker anyway. I don't think he could slide past the yellow, and don't believe there's a gap that he could have left. And I just feel you give Jimmy the opportunity to. Well, he tried to just fluke it to be fair, and he, he made it. So camera angles can be a bit deceiving. Maybe the shot wasn't as easy as it looked, but. I don't want to question him. He's a little bit better than me. <laughs> but another dry break from Jimmy. Not, not the greatest of opportunities for Tom. Comes to the table, which is the main thing for him. Forced into yellows, no opener on the reds. He has got onto the to the um, bottom left of the table, but. Well, the top left on the screen as you look now, but um, certainly not a nice part. Every yellow does have a pocket. It's just some, just the cue ball isn't the easiest to get to grips with. I don't know if he's just knocked that yellow, so maybe doesn't now go into the the top right as we look. Top left now, I believe it does. He's having a look if it goes in the middle. Yeah, unlucky if he's not that safe. You figure that if he came into that at that angle, he's probably going to knock the road away from it, but he didn't quite have enough pace. If he goes into the middle, it's come out quite nice for him, but obviously slightly awkward queuing. But he's a tall guy, Tom. That's not too much of a problem. Yeah, the position he's in now, it would really suit him if it went in the middle. And I think it, I think it must do. You know the the way the way he's played, he's he's played to be there, hasn't he? So doesn't want a massive angle. Well, no, he's I don't know whether, what, whether he's probably played for the plant there. Maybe that suggests the yellow doesn't go to the right center. Yeah, you'd feel if it did go to the right center because he could have just played high on it and then played down for the plant afterwards. So mm. you'd think you would take it out of the way if it went. It obviously doesn't go, which which makes this finish a lot tougher. I think he's now just got to drop this ball into the bottom corner, dead weight, and land on the yellow into the top left. So I don't think either going to the bottom there. Played the little bump. Come out within, come out nicely for this shot. We'll get, we'll get him in this last yellow. It's going to be very difficult. Yeah, you can see where the next two shots come from, but where's the one after that? I think he's going to have to top this one through and just leave leave, leave the next shot into the bottom right, and then he's just going to have to accept a tough shot so he can screw directly back now and sort of play. He wants to be almost two inches to the left of where he is now, and it goes into the top left. Yeah, I think he's okay. So I just pop this and screw off the side rail. Yeah, I didn't want to screw back too far because it made it more of a cut. It's quite tight, but even if he has to play it with a trace of right hand side, it should still be okay. Yeah, he'll probably play this with a trace of right hand side anyway. Just help just helps with the pot and, and the cue ball in general. And here we see Tom with a Another eight ball that you expect him to make. Just just checking where what the path of the cue ball's doing. Doesn't doesn't want to be going in off. If he screws it, maybe flicks the 
the first one and can bring that bottom pocket into play or we'll see how we see if that bottom pocket does come into play yeah so just got the flip but was able to control it going perfectly now normally such a massive break That's going to open up the black. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. The, the eight ball was just awkward. You didn't know where the red was going to go and it's just bumped them both lovely. Jimmy will be screwing in his chair. They've just been watching that red travel down the table and just watching it come out and cannon it perfectly. You can confidently predict this frame won't take very long. No, I think this one... We'll be going 3 2 to Tom. He's over here that one a touch, but it's not a problem. You can drop the one into the left hand middle. Top left, bottom left, right centre, bottom right, and the eight ball to follow in the same pocket. And if this was maybe Jordan Shepherd or Sean Chipperfield, this would be going a lot quicker, but Tom, you just see him, he's almost walking in slow mo when he plays, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's the way he lives his life generally, almost it's supremely relaxed yeah. wandering around. Such good position. Didn't even really need it in this frame, but it's been pinpoint with every shot. Yeah, that's what the best players do. They don't move the cue ball around. Don't need to play with side. You should just be perfect. We're all within six inches every single time. And you just make the game so much easier. Yeah, it's amazing. Tom's broke as big as he did. And you'll see that they break, they're actually breaking from exactly the same position. Um, straight and half looked like a bit of frustration in that one, to be honest. You know, you... Your first couple go dry, you start to think, you know, the, the match is going away from you if you're not going to get the opportunities off the break, which Jimmy has only had first chance once. I'm not saying that's the only time he's come to the table, but, y you know, it's, you do feel like you're behind in a match if you're not getting the first chance very often. And it looks like there's a bit more frustration, which naturally throws you that little bit wider if, you, if you're not flush with the pack. And finds himself straight into the middle pocket which is probably the most annoying thing for a pool player ever. Yeah, straight in without hitting any other balls and almost straight in without even hitting the table. It's practically airborne when it found the middle pocket. So after the perfect break last time round, Tom's faced with, well, slightly more difficult but not a whole lot more difficult. Yeah, sort of one or one or jello. I don't know whether he might have been. I think he actually might have played to pop that off the red. You know, I think he just had a little smile to himself because that would have opened up the yellow um, closest to the eight ball um, into the left hand centre, which, which could play a difference in this frame. It's just slightly awkward to land on. It may not cause a problem for him, but. Wants that to hold up, wants to be on the ball into the right centre, and he's almost not on a ball, he's landed okay, but very nearly wasn't on the ball at all, which would have been awfully unlucky. The pro touch there from Cousins, just pulling up just in time. Yeah, that ball that you're talking about, the middle of these three as we look at them, it does go in a couple of places, but just not quite as accessible. That's why he's played the more difficult shot to get on it now. They now swing the cue ball round. So players with a bit of right hand side hit the side rail and then the bottom rail come over for the one on the left hand side of the table. Don't think he can hold for the other one, so that will be his choice. He's just, just flicked it, he's landed okay. He isn't. He is on that, and he can he can screw this between the gap of the red and the black, the two reds in the middle of the table, and the eight ball come across. Unless he feels the right shot, maybe the one into the bottom right now. Come up past the reds here. Or is he going to check through the gap? He might come up past. Just he was able to.
to check through. He's actually landed really nice there then. Simply dropped this ball in down the rail and the black goes into the right centre. Yeah, that was another shot that was better than it looked. Natural angle kind of going towards those reds. Just checked it up. And on these rails, they, they, they don't normally check up quite as, quite as easy as that. No, that's actually quite a, a difficult shot to play. If they haven't recovered the cushions for this event, but had they, that's a very slippery shot to play. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of an awkward one to explain to people, really. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really think anyone likes new rails, to be honest. Obviously, you have to have them at some point because they have to be recloughed, but nobody enjoys playing on them because it takes out pace from the from the table from the table because when you when you when you have to use a cushion you have to apply that bit more speed but then you get into your head that you need to play shots with more speed but when you don't then use a cushion the better the table is really fast and you know it's just a it's a bit of a mess for you for your head when you're trying to focus on a load of different things already and then you've got that to take into consideration So big break to the point that half the balls have ended up right at the top of the table but not ended up in great spots at the moment Yeah so we'll just see a little bit of tippy tapping from both players each shot played with an element of development Need they need to try and make something happen in the frame Tom's got an opportunity here just to bump that red away from the yellow and leave Jimmy no shot probably be the best option you can bump it away and keep the cue ball just so it runs off the cushion and gets back towards the yellow wants to move it a little bit because he does want it to be accessible really decided to keep it tight Let's say he's in any way protecting his lead, but I guess figuring that if you're a couple of frames up, you can sort of let your opponent try and make something happen. Just no real progression being made. This is where it would be quite nice to have a rule where a ref can perhaps call a, call a re rack at, at some point, maybe after 10 shots each. Just if they're, if they're still tapping around here. I have to say, I don't want to be sitting here watching them tap around for 28 minutes. <laughs> Take a break with the commentary. Well, yeah. <laughs> when they sort themselves out, we'll give you more. Tom, Tom probably wouldn't mind tapping around here for 28 minutes, but I, I, I certainly don't want to sit here and sit here and watch it. And I'm sure nobody else at home does. Go on back 100 years in time and play a competitive billiards match. I think it's the furthest the cue balls move. This frame. <laughs> it's a bit ironic because it's a bit incongruous with the rest of the match, which has actually been very fluent attacking stuff. So we've decided to move, and we're now going to tuck up behind a different ball. We'll just ch change the, the the scenery of the frame. We'll move over to this red. We'll flick up behind this one, and then Jimmy may force it back away. The oh no, look. it's all going on here. Loads of safety. Well, wild stuff. He's played a couple of balls back across. Has Tom just pushed it enough to tempt Jimmy into a finish? And he has. That's what we wanted. Tom obviously got bored. Well, there you go, Jimmy. I'll give you an opportunity. Tease you into it. Not the worst opportunity though, especially now. Yeah, that was a good shot actually. You need to hold for this red into the top left. And just bump the red onto the bottom rail. Doesn't it wants to avoid the yellow. Yeah, just bumps it. He's kind of touch further, but he'll just play that ball now instead. He was playing for the one into the top right. Awkward to hold. Maybe might elect to play a cannon into the red into the yellow which is just above the red just like that we should be going four three yeah that was a good choice of shot because if he slipped past it he's always got the ball to the middle it's much better to try to get on the one on the top rail and get it out of the way 
Well, suddenly, after all the tippy tappy, this has sped right up, and Jimmy's about to take out a good finish here. Jimmy to break. Yeah, and that is going to be the key, trying to win more frames off his own break. Well, it'll be in his hands to level this up at 4 all. That's what I feel he needs to do. Quite amazing because, you know, you, you, watch, you watch Jimmy and Liam break over a season. I can almost promise you Liam will, be get, will get a lot more chances than Jimmy. Well, fortunately, he hasn't disappointed us there. We've been talking about his steps to improve the break, and he's got a pretty good contact on that break. It's not a perfect layout, but he's got a couple of things he can go for. Yes, um, he's got he's got one yellow into the bottom left. Can he? I think this. Can he get through? Can he with a swerve to pot the red over the right centre? Probably. Yeah, that's what he's playing. Could lose the cue ball here and land on the bottom rail with no shot. Just needs that fit contact. Yeah, it was such a tough shot. Has he got away with it? Has he got away with it? Has he left the one to the... Yeah, I think he's left the one to the top right. And Tom may be able to pop the one into the bottom left, to be fair. It just depends how close he is. Yeah, he'd love to take the one to the top, to the bottom left, because it's a one good one to get out of the way. But if not, he has got the second choice. Uh, reaching it's not a problem it's just whether he, whether he feels he's going to play a push shot or whether he feels he's maybe just overcutting it with how close he is not always easy to pick the angle yeah I think he's okay he can come, he'll be playing with this bit of check side come up behind the yellows top half of the table it's behind the one at the top but can't see it being a problem if he isn't and to be fair there, looking at this, we're probably going 5-3. You know, you don't expect Tom to to ever miss when he's when he's in, but just this year it's amplified, isn't it? You just you just actually don't think he's ever going to miss. Isn't that? That's the scary thing we're playing him nowadays. It's I've been lucky; I've only ever played him once, and it was a fair few years ago now. But just you just watch him walk around, and you just. He doesn't care. I mean, he gives that impression, and then he just pops everything. Oh, that's quite annoying. Yeah, his demeanour is quite intimidating. Not because there's anything menacing about it, but it's just so relaxed that you just think he's not bothered by any pressure you can apply to him. Yeah, and you know, when 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 you're a player, you do you do read your opponent. Um, if someone's walking around with a load of confidence, you know, like like what Sheppy does, what like what Chippy does, Melin. Gareth Potts, you know that they, they they walk around the table and they they try to dominate it. They try to push, uh, boss it, maybe almost bully you off the table. Um, whereas Tom's just like, I'm just not going to care and I'm just going to win, and that's going to annoy you. Uh, and I, I'll never forget it. The, the only time I ever played him, he fluked the black at six all against me first to seven. And he shook my hand and laughed. And that, that's just the kind of guy Tom is. He just he, he just looked at me and laughed. And the next five times I walked past him that weekend, he just giggled to himself. I just, I just, I couldn't believe it. I didn't even really know him at the time. I was just like, all right, fair enough, Tom. This year, certainly, he's been putting in a lot more time. I think he practices with Sean Story once a week. Um, maybe Sean Chipperfield once a week as well. You know, and, well, it's shown, isn't it? It just, just proves that no matter how good you are, you can't get complacent, you can't get lazy. You've got, you've got to put the time in. It does also show, show the benefit of having some people in your local area that are of that standard because that's kind of the same for both of these players. Jimmy plays out of players in Newcastle under Lyme where like this is Gareth Potts and Liam White play. It's, it's very helpful to have friends and practice partners of that calibre. Yeah, I think I've had that conversation with a few people about the people that live in Stoke. I said, to be honest, if you want to be good at pool and you're, you're from that area, you can't really fail. It, you're in such a such a good pool of players that, you know, as long as you don't do something to separate yourself from all of them, you're always going to have ridiculously good practice partners and th there's no real way that you can't improve. 
and you know they 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 all practice together regularly. They they obviously all get the opportunity to practice with Gareth Potts, which is quite a nice thing to have. I don't know whether the other top guys that play regularly whether they they're always practicing with certain people. Um, I know Phil, for example, doesn't really ever practice with anyone. Um, Phil's kind of more of a man of I'll have half hour every other day if I can. He's not he's not a a range of game with someone and have three hours with them. It's I'll have half hour on my own today. If I can, I'll have another half hour tomorrow. And oh, he may see that he's been a bit unlucky there, but I think he needed to jack down on the cue ball touch there, widen the angle. But yeah, going back to the areas that these guys live in, they've got, they've got a lot of good players. and it Sets you up with a good opportunity. Yeah, it's pretty hard to be the trailblazer when you're coming from an area or a country where there's no existing presence at any sport. It's, it's a tough ask. It's a tough ask there for Jimmy. He put himself into that position. Couldn't find a way out this time. Opens up the table for Tom. I think he'll play the plant into the left centre now. Bring the cue ball down to the bottom cushion, which will leave him an angle on the yellow, which he can then screw up the table and develop the two that are on the right hand side. Oh, we could actually put it clean. I didn't realise it went clean. Even better. Keeps the ball over the pocket. It's almost a free a free go into these. You can't fail to have any kind of can't fail to not have a shot, sorry. And what what was a big frame and a big opportunity for Jimmy? You now feel that's such a big moment in the match. Slightly misjudged from Tom there. He wanted to go cushion first into them. Landed with an angle again that he could go into it, or he could play for the plant. Depends how he feels. Yeah, he has got a good angle to if you just come off the top cushion and knock out the bottom one of the two yellows on the right cushion. He's probably, yeah, he didn't expect to hit that as, as full as he did actually. Which maybe goes into the top right. I'm not sure it does. It's slightly awkward now. Yeah, he's got a couple of balls near it, which is to his advantage, but he's got some work to do still. Extension call. A bit high tariff, but maybe the the yellow in the middle of the table, flick it off the red to then make the plant. No, he's now going to play the cannon. Pop this ball into the top left and play the cannon as he come too far. When he hit that, that looked perfect, but the cue ball's just running on an inch or two. He's now a bit straighter than he wanted. Can we manufacture an angle to get over? The way he's played a couple of these shots in this match already, I think he played two in the first frame. Just so much power, forcing the cue ball where he wants it. Sort of expecting to do it again. Just so much power. It's been a bit unfortunate, to be honest, because... That yellow only goes into into three pockets, and you know he's gonna have to come away. He's gonna he may have a tricky-ish cut into the right centre. It's almost like no ball is dead straight with Tom. Just, he can just manufacture an angle, put it into the side of the pocket, and play with a lot of pace if he needs to. So able to just hold this ball for the right centre. I think the natural line just takes him off the bottom cushion for the eight ball into the bottom left. Yeah, just like that. No side was needed. Left himself absolutely perfect. Picked his spot on the cushion where he wanted to land. You have to say it's been a good performance from Tom so far. You know, he, he expects to... Um, he expects to run deep every tournament. And it's not as possible in these these standard tournaments. You, you sometimes just don't get opportunities. I, 
I didn't catch it all, uh, but the Sean Story and Ryan Marcus game, I flicked it on at 2 0, and all I done was saw Sean Story break until 6 0. And I didn't see the first two frames, but they seemed to seem to be fairly quick by by what was on the shot by what was on the match clock. So you know, sometimes you just don't get many opportunities. Uh, one of the, I I feel one of the worst sayings in pool was that you know when someone said they didn't get enough opportunities to win. Well, sometimes that it's not true because if you've made one error, all of a sudden that's that's stopping you from getting another opportunity so I, I've never I've never liked that saying a lot of people do like to say it you know you've, you you may have had four opportunities and made four errors well yeah you've not had seven opportunities to win a match but if you don't make them four errors you get you get other chances to so probably one of the worst sayings in ball so I can't really say it for sure in that Sean Story game but the only opportunity I see him out is it's 6-0 down Nice shot from Jimmy. He's got a difficult yellow open now. Yeah, I actually think I would be playing the one to the top left as we look. Or, um, uh, no, you can hold for it in the left centre. So we'll play the bottom right, hold for it into the left centre, and then he can just top through. So the one at the left hand side of the table will be his last ball. He feels rushed, so he's going to play it into the top left first. I think, I think he should stun back here. Yeah. Now we're coming up. His target's that red in the middle of the table. Anywhere near there, as long as you're not queuing over it, it's fine. Further the better, because you can stun across for the eight ball into the same pocket. It's close to perfect, that shot. Can only off the behind the eight ball. 6-4, puts a bit of pressure on. Yeah, good stuff to be fair from Jimmy. Oh, I thought that was enough. One thing you'll probably notice with Tom's break, he does have, he probably has more power than any of the other pros, but he probably loses the cue ball just as much as anyone else. It, it's, it's quite frequent, he's sort of fretting in these pockets, but I think I think he um, he's willing to lose a touch of that control just to make sure he gets that full power. At first glance, it's not actually the worst leave. Uh, maybe just maybe maybe just too much, a bit of a bigger angle than he wanted onto this bot one bottom left. Yeah, could choose to reroute to the one to the right centre if he has got too much angle. Can he see enough of it? He, he, he's now looking at the one into the left centre, bridging over. This is horrible. Forced into it because he feels he can't play the one into the bottom left and hold. Yeah, I mean, th these are, these are tr tricky now. Unless that ball passes into the bottom right. I'm not sure it does, I think the red just blocks the pocket. Horrible to tell when you're sitting there sometimes, you just, you just want to know if a ball goes, you can't really explain or talk about what could potentially happen. No, it obviously didn't go because Tom's tried to be clever with the cue ball there and try and get into that problem. Just bump past it. Now you now you're in trouble and you know what option options don't look great. Time to pull back and play a safety. Is he playing the double? Yeah, playing the double. He's on the one to the bottom left. Again he's, he's sort of just chasing a finish here. I mean, he he may just be fooling me, and this may go into the bottom right, and it may not be as bad a bad a chance as we, as I first thought. But I think it does. I think he's he's looking at it that it does go, and he's getting the cube into the top left hand corner of the table, so he can then drop the yellow into the centre. 
Oh, he's missed it. A rare Q item up. in this match, um, Tom Cousins miss. Threw his queue up, might maybe something happened, I don't know, I think he's just missed it. But. And this is effectively the match for Jimmy, he's got to clear up here and then it's going to be his break next. He just needs to make something happen without allowing Tom back to the table. Yeah, that, that, that was a pot attempt, he has tried to tried to pot that, he wouldn't have wanted Tom to get back to the table. I think we'll see a loss of turn here. I think Tom will flick off that bottom yellow, push it towards the cushion just to make that red a bit awkward. Leave the cue ball near the bottom bottom left hand pocket. I'd be surprised to see him take this yellow orange because I don't think he can really land on anything. Just makes it awkward. He's playing it thick. Is he playing the thin cut into the bottom right? He is. What a shot. Is he on anything? Oh, that goes. As he's, he just got to pop this long ball and, he, and he's won, I think. Because I think that goes into the bottom left. Well, this will be a remarkable finish if he gets out from here. Oh, Jimmy will feel sick after that. 15 seconds going. Gonna have to throw in a quick one. It's a great part. Jimmy's gonna feel sick if this ball goes past and he and it doesn't come up and block the eight. That is just that's a disgusting cut from Tom. Oh, what a finish this has been. Yeah, that. As a player, that is horrible to come up against. Top draw finish from Tom Cousins to wrap up a very high quality performance.